What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your guy. Some, some, some. Hit the keys. Here today to do a quick review and demonstration over the Farmstone Room by IK Multimedia. The Farmstone Room is basically an emulation of a classic drum studio from the 80s. I'll make sure if you guys do like this content, though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. But with no further delay, let's get right into the plugin, baby. Some, some, some hit the key. All right, guys, so I brought you to the website first because I figured they could do a better job of explaining exactly to a T what this reverb is and why it's special. Um, so while we look here, it says, Phil Collins made history when he tracked the explosive drum sounds for the worldwide hit song In the Air Tonight. A wash in the unique reverb of the studio's stonewall drum room and crushed by compression, it has become perhaps the signature drum sound of the 80s. So what basically made this drum room different was the stone walls. As we all know, typically we put up all kinds of treatment and everything to get the stone and all that other stuff out of the room, but the stone added something great to this. Um, so scroll down just a little bit more. Um, seeking to recapture the magic of their own studio, Fisher Lane Farm in the UK, the band Genesis enlisted the original engineer, Hugh Padgin, to build a drum room of the same specs as the one in the townhouse studios. Well, unfortunately, both them studios are gone. So the only way that you can get this sound or close to is this emulation. So um, things that I'll explain a little bit more as we get into it are what make it special. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into FL Studio for just a few moments, take a look at the plugin and check it out. Um, so when we hop into FL Studio, the plugin is going to look like this. It's got your basic controls down here for reverb. Um, it's got your, your original signal here, a stereo room and a mono crush. I'll explain all that more in detail here in a moment. Um, I made a little sample beat as always. I did use the Farmstone reverb on everything. It's intended for drums, but I used it on everything. I'm not gonna demonstrate it on everything today, but it is the reverb I used on the pianos and on everything today. So the beat's not all the way mixed down, but let's go. All right, guys, so that's the sample little beat that I put together for you guys today. I probably should have made a synth wave beat or a rock type beat, but I failed y'all. So um, here we are. So basically when you open up the plugin and take a look at it, it's going to look like this. One thing that's cool about this is that you can either set this up on your send so they have the presets for you to set it up on a send or on an insert. So if you wanna put it right on the drums or you wanna put it on a send, I'm always gonna recommend to put it on the send. Um, but this is what those drums sounded like without the Farmstone room on there. Now I'm gonna turn it on. So you can automatically hear the dramatic difference. The drums that I'm using for this are actually from IK Multimedia as well. They're called Modal Drum CS. Um, it is the free version of Moto Drum. So if you don't have Moto Drum, I recommend getting it because you can get some good sounding drums with those. So over here, we have pre-delay, we have decay, we have size, and we have high pass. I'm not going to mess with that too much because that's basic standard controls on most reverbs. So you guys should know that. Um, but right here, we have this curtain close button, and this actually changes um, the sound of the reverb. So that's pretty cool too. So like when you push this, boom, you'll see the curtain come up in the back and it covers up that brick wall. So it's going to change the way the reverb sounds. Um, next to that, we have input. So this is the dry signal. So this is the actual modal drum signal coming into the plugin. So then next to that, we have a stereo room mic, and then we have a mono crush mic. So these are also um, two different mics. So the way that they have this set up is they consider this a mic, this a mic, and this a mic. So then you have different controls over each one of the rooms. So like in the stereo room, you get compression controls. Um, so you can control your threshold and the mix. And then in the mono crush, you don't get compression like that. Um, you get what's called a listen mic compression. 
Um, so you get the threshold and then the mix on the listen mic compression is going to be the listen mic and the compression. So one thing I didn't mention to you guys is what made this reverb super special is the engineer who was messing with it when he was talking back to Phil Collins and the other um, you know, drummers, he left the talkback mic on. So then he could hear the reverb from the talkback mic along with the echo from the room and all that is what makes this special. Um, so this is gonna be a mixture of that actual microphone and compression. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to just take this to the 80s right here at 80 send. Um, and this is what it's gonna sound like without any dry signal in. So you see how it sounds super reverby, super spacey and all that other stuff. Um, now, if I start to move this dial up, this is gonna blend in the dry signal and it's gonna give it a more, I don't wanna say natural sound, but a more natural sound, if that makes sense. So you can hear, you know, easy as day, how that's making uh, the signal stronger because it's giving you the full signal without any effects on it, blended in with the stereo room and the mono crush room. Um, so now what I wanna do is I'm going to um, turn down uh, the, the, the mono crush just so that I, we can focus on the stereo room for one second so you can hear what that's doing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and leave the input up on the dry signal and then I'm just gonna blend this up so you can hear that. And then we're gonna mess with the threshold um, on the compression and all that stuff as well. So you can hear clear as day by just sliding that slider up. It's gonna make those drums much wider. Now we can mess with the threshold in the mix a little bit. So obviously you can hear it compressing those drums. Um, you also have EQ down here. Um, so you can affect the, the reverb and the drums with this as well. So you can hear the sound of that change e like night and day, you know, by just messing with the highs, the mids and the lows. So then next to that, we have the mono crush. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down for a minute. Now what the mono crush is supposed to do is it's supposed to compress the mess out of the sound while adding that reverb into it as well. So it works best in my opinion with the stereo room and the input together, but I just wanna let you guys hear what it sounds like um, you know, as you dial it in and you mess with it a little bit. So I'm just gonna push play again with this dry input and then I'm just gonna raise this up. So you can hear how it's kind of adding like a mono reverb. Um, but what's cool about this, I'll solo it real quick so you can hear it on solo. All right, so I want you to notice the difference of that one and this one, what this one sounds like by itself soloed. <laughs> now this one again. So you can hear clear as day, the clear differences in the two reverbs. Now what makes this fire is when you turn, when you, when you, I'm gonna just roll this up into it. So I'm gonna have these other two going. Um, so again, this is what these two sounded like. Now, when I add this mono crush to it, it's gonna kind of give it like this growling sound and it's kind of make it a little thicker. So I don't even know if growling is the right word. It just gives it more oomph. It just, it doesn't make it wider because it's mono, but it makes it thicker. Oh, <laughs> that drum is thick, girl. Um, and so then obviously you're gonna get frequency controls over here um, with the mono crush as well. And you're gonna also get this uh, threshold and this mix. We'll mess with that a little bit. Um, and then we'll mess with the frequencies a little bit as well.
All right, and so uh, the last thing I wanna do for you guys is I wanna go through a few of the presets just so you can hear what some of these different presets sound like. I'm just gonna start the 80s preset again and then I'll just go all the way down to the stone halls and sort of all on the inserts. So one more thing that I want to show you guys is if you close this curtain, it does mess with the way the reverb sounds. So you'll hear clear as day, it makes the reverb much more wider because obviously it's got something else to bounce off of. And that's what makes reverb <laughs> reverb is it's just your sound bouncing off of hard walls and stuff. So. Um, that's what I got for you guys today on this plugin. In my honest opinion, who is this plugin for? It is for somebody who is doing synthwave or rock music or anything where they need those loud 80 sounding drums, those loud drums. I'm not gonna hold y'all, this ain't gonna be for everybody. So if you're just a trap producer, this probably isn't gonna be the reverb for you. You know, if you're only doing boom bap beats, this might not be the reverb for you. Um, but if you are making any kind of synthwave rock beats or anything where you're looking for some wide, some loud, and some 80 sounding drums, with all the controls you get on this reverb, this might be the one. So uh, make sure if you guys do like this content though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. Appreciate you guys' time as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Some, some, some hit the key.